Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the gallows. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the emperor had changed. He'd been good once, a shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. But then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods, midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books, so they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The Ravens had come back with dropships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. And Renardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. The kid was looking down, watching his city burn. Sorry, kid, Renato told the kid. Look, if we give them the book, they'll leave you alone. My mother died for this book! I promised her I'd protect you. Ah, oh, damn it. The kid had run off. With the book, of course. So Renato had to run after him. Two ravens were staring at the kid like he was their dinner, which probably was what was in their tiny brains. Hey, Renato said. They cocked their heads at him. Pick on someone as ugly as you. Wait, that didn't come out right. For the Emperor! The ravens cawed and rushed at him. dropship flew overhead. He hoped they hadn't noticed him. The kid. The Gate of Heroes. Someone's idea of a joke. Making the Skyship Docks a gated community. You needed a hero's sword to open it. And the kid was on the other side of the gate. Who let you through? Promise me you'll take the book to the rebels. Or I'm gonna steal your ship. I'm not taking the damn book anywhere. And neither are you. Try and stop me, laughed the kid. I bet you don't even have a hero's sword. And with that, the kid hopped away. Had to hand it to the kid. He was an idiot, but he had guts. Where was Renardo going to get a hero sword? I could forge a hero sword here, but I'm going to need ore. I hope nobody minds if I use this stuff.
Hero Sword. QED. This is what he got for settling down and finding people to care about. The kid's mum had been a swell cook, and she'd laughed at Renato's jokes, even when he didn't know he'd made one. And then the ravens had come to burn her, and she'd made him promise to protect the kid. But she never told him where the book was, just the kid. He came up to a ledge. It was too far to jump. There'd been a bridge here before, hadn't there? And there was Peter, giggling at him. How'd you get across? He asked the kid. Where'd you find a hook? I harped, said the kid. Wise-ass kid. Hey, look out behind you! Cute, said Renato. Oh, ravens. It was time to got some sense into the kid. Just hook his way across the ledge and chase the kid down. Thing was, he hadn't used his hook since he'd retired. He'd done it. Maybe if he meditated at that altar there, he'd remember his old skills. starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. And there was the Farfarer. She was the fastest ship he'd ever known. She could do the Kessel run in 12 furlongs. Oh, so the salesman had told him. And something told him the kid was about to walk into an ambush. Stop! He shouted. I'm not giving you the book! Shouted the kid and took off. No! Peter! But the kid ran for it. And a goggler nailed him with its eye. The book was unburned. Next to it were the buckles from the kid's shoes and a kid-sized pile of ashes. Damn it, why hadn't he lied and told the kid he'd take the book to the rebels? The kid would be alive now. Really pissed off and betrayed, but alive. Oh, damn it. Renardo picked up the book. He couldn't let the Empire have it now. He was going to have to get it out of there. He'd be a wanted man. Probably have to join the rebellion just to have a place to dock. Well, he'd hated home life anyway. What was the big deal about this book anyway? Maybe he should open it and find out. All that had been years ago. How many? The war was a blur. And now three Raven scout ships were chasing him. Where are you running, rebel? Cored the Raven captain over the loud hailer. Renato could see them cranking up their catapults. Just going out for milk? Renato yelled back. Where can you run? Laughed the Raven horribly. Far behind him, another city was burning. The dark cloud above its island was thousands of Imperial ships. The fleet was doing a thorough job. Take us to the rebel base and we'll spare your life! It cawed. The entire jury-rigged rebel fleet was only a few islands to the east. Beyond that were only the Pillars of Heaven, a 
sea of endless blood-colored tornadoes. The rebellion was out of time. Unless Renardo could bring a game changer. Maybe he could. Renardo had found out where he could find the pieces of the Sky Ripper, the legendary weapon that had exiled the lost gods. Surely a legendary weapon could win the final battle. On the other hand, his old friend Lupino had sent Renato a desperate message saying he had a brilliant scheme to save the rebellion. If Renato could only rescue him. Renato dived the farfarer towards the abyss. As he felt the heat of the jet stream, the raven ships peeled off, not stable enough to follow him down there. Now it was time to choose. Lupino or the Sky Ripper. Pino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lupino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The Ravens had figured out that Lupino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? If I craft a sword now, it's going to be really short. Don't look down, he told himself. Don't look down. People were frightened these days. Just two weeks passed, Renardo had sneaked through an empty town and listened to the raven's call about the emperor's new taste in ritual sacrifice. No. Renardo's blood was up. He just needed to smash something. Don't we just agree to disagree? Said Renato. No? Ravens were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. 
If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Where had the mad rabbit got to? Ronaldo felt like he was ready to learn new things. <laughs> Thank goodness he didn't have to go to school. It was starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. missed his old skills. He welcomed them back like it was at a reunion. Dirty and bloody, Renato finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renato recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We... Capture Zenobia, we find out what she knows. And that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and, oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power.
Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. They'd been close. She'd told him things no one else knew. But she'd never told him who she really was. She knows all the Emperor's plans, chuckled the Master's spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right, said Lapino. Taking her would change the game, all right. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Guys, everything. Two eyes, good. One eye, dead. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong, thought Renardo. Go ahead. I'm sure you know better, said Lapino. He wasn't that good, yet.
Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up at her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She became smoke. And he noticed he had a blade to his throat. Stay a while. Heard a familiar voice. Did you really think you could capture me? Zenobia said as her ship lifted off. Now I just wanted some privacy, Renato said. Did you ever wonder why the Emperor adopted you? And he told her why. His Imperial Majesty wanted to bring the lost gods back. They could make him immortal. But to seal the bargain, he needed a sacrifice. Someone who truly loved him. You're lying. She was furious. You can't prove that! I can. And so, they set sail for the Nexus. The scientists at the observatory have resurrected one of his victims. Well, he's not exactly alive. But it can talk, and it can't lie. You took a big risk. You know, I could just cast a spell to make you tell me where the rebel base is. And you wouldn't consider that cheating? She frowned. Ugh, fine. Let's go get your witness. The rebellion had started after atrocities that the Empire hushed up. Renato had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred for one book. He had slept in a burnt village. Dead kittens and puppies had come to tell him what the Emperor had done to them. <laughs> Who needed bridges, anyway? with all these sword crafting materials, thought Renato. old tricks and some new ones now you really ought to ask for a raise Thank <laughs> you. 
wasn't his fault. They looked so... breakable. <sighs> she caught up with him. She seemed troubled. All right, out with it, he said. He sent his ravens to search for an ancient crystal. Something called the Iblis Stone. Iblis? Isn't he one of the lost gods? He shivered. A stone dedicated to one of the lost gods. Well, that could give great power. But what would the god demand in return? Renato had been searching for a way to save the rebellion. Lapina wanted to capture and interrogate Zenobia. But if he could show her proof of her father's madness, maybe she would join the rebellion. sword was always a little better when he sharpened it. but why do they sting if you didn't pay attention? Distance. Cowards. Really dangerous, effective cowards. used a hybrid propulsion system fueled by anti-gravity and wishful thinking. Observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists and black feathers everywhere. The ravens had taken care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders. 
Zenobia stared around, shocked. The scientists had been neutral. They had no part in the rebellion. Take me to your council, she said, shaken. I have things to tell them. It was what Renardo had gambled on. The Zenobia would turn against her father once she knew his madness. But the rebel base was secret. Could he really risk taking the Emperor's daughter there? Renata reached Lapino by far speaker toad. The one creature the Ravens had left alive at the observatory. I'll meet up with you at the base, Lapino said through the toad. Good thinking. Renata gave him the coordinates. There's a shuttle here I can uh, borrow. Renata found Zenobia in the chart room. I've been having awful dreams, she said. Dead kittens and oh, worse. I thought there were only dreams, you know. Why would anyone want the lost gods back? In those days, the favorite of a god could become immortal. She held herself and shivered. He wants to become an eater of souls. Well, I'm not afraid of dying. Just dying of boredom, <laughs> Renato said, but she didn't laugh. Silence fell as they flew towards the ruins of the city of Ubar where the rebellion leadership was hiding. If Zenobia couldn't help them fight off her father, no one could. As they touched the ground, he could smell the ravens and hear their hungry caws in the distance. They're probably looking for me, she said. You go on ahead. She had that fiery look in her eyes that he'd always loved. It was a bit odd, though, how easy she'd been to convince. It was what he'd gambled on, but he'd expected more of an argument. She'd always loved to argue. She considered it the fastest way to the truth. Maybe she'd long suspected the truth. Sometimes all it took was taking the bandages from your eyes. That must be it, he told himself. There had to be something useful in these things, didn't there? Imagine if you built a house on one of these things. Oh, that would be amazing. It would be like having a boat.
caught their breath under a ruined arch. It's beautiful, she said. This was the library of Uba, he said. Your father's ravens thought they had an ancient book. She nodded. Was she crying? This was exactly what I wanted, Renata thought. To turn her to our cause. So, oh, why do I feel something is terribly wrong? Because nothing ever goes this smoothly, is why. You blinked. Most people still use doorknobs. The long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. Hmm. Hero ball. Hero sword. Ice wall. Ice. about. Ooh, what was it again? Council toads swarmed around Zenobia, shocked she was there, shocked she had changed sides. Then the walls exploded. He heard toads croaking, Oh, the ravens! Blackbirds were pouring through holes everywhere. It's a trap! cried the council speaker. In the confusion, he saw flashes of magic. Then Zenobia being hustled off by Imperial troops. So... She had betrayed him after all. Renato ran for his ship. The Farfarer flew into the clouds, barely losing the Imperial Ravens pursuing him. The rebellion was lost, and he had lost it. There was nothing to do but find Zenobia and make her pay for her treachery. His heart ached. He still loved her, but he had trusted her and he had been a fool. She would be back at the fleet, Gloating with her mad, bloodthirsty father. For all Renardo knew, she was helping him bring back the old lost gods back from their exile. Renardo landed in the middle of the Imperial fleet. The rebels were losing badly. Without leadership, it was a slaughter. Renato felt strangely free, trying not to think about how he had lost the war, trying not to think about how he had loved Zenobia, blinded himself to her treachery. That's what it meant to be a hero, 
To keep on fighting after the most bitter of betrayals. To never know if you could trust anyone. Cats, what a waste of fur. This burning sword from the south was terrific for barbecuing sausages and ravens. I could do that. <laughs> 